Base Row Complete Review Best Alternative to AI Air Table. In this video, we are going to be talking about Base Row IO and how you're going to be using this incredible software to create an open platform application without any type of coding. Okay, we're going to be talking about it in great detail and I'm going to show you how this is an incredible alternative to Airtable. Now, as we all know, Airtable is one of the top most sourced you could say application or database creator out there and a lot of businesses and workspaces use it but we're going to be using this application called base row to establish a whole workspace and create an application and database on it without any type of coding whatsoever all right so without further ado let's get straight into it so to get started you're going to come to base row.io and to start things off what you are going to be doing is you're going to come over to sign up. Now, once you go to sign up, it's going to bring you here where it's going to ask you all the recurring details. OK, so you're going to enter in your email address, then you're going to enter in your name. Now, once you've done that, you're also going to enter a password for yourself. And once we have gotten through the password and everything, what you're going to want to do from there is you're going to agree to their terms and everything. Okay, and you're going to make sure that the passwords match each other very well. And once we've done that, agree with their terms and click on sign up. So once you click on sign up, it's going to bring you through with the onboarding process where it says, let's build your first workspace together. Which team are you on? So you could have marketing, product and design, engineering, operations, etc. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go with IT and support or you could also go with product and design and once you do that you're going to click on continue so it says tell us a bit more about yourself what is your role or job title so i'm going to go with head of team okay it says how many people are in your team i'm going to go with 11 to 50 country you can go with anything on this okay it doesn't really matter too much so i'm going to go with the united states and once we do that here it says, I'm okay with sharing this with the base row team. So you can turn this off if you're, you know, pretty uh, outlookish about your information, but uh, it doesn't really matter too much. Once you do that here, it says, create your workspace. So now you're going to give a name or a title to your workspace. I'm just going to keep it on John Leahy's workspace. Once that is done here, it says, invite your collaborators. You can always add more in later for yourself. So your collaborators can be invited by sending them an email. OK, so you can invite them this way if you want to. But I'm going to skip this step for now. Near it says create your first database. Let us know what you're working on. So you can go ahead and create a database from scratch. You can create it from a file or you can create it from Airtable. OK, so you can go with any of these. OK, it totally depends on you on whatever you want to access for yourself. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating it from scratch. Let's give the database a name. I'm going to call it new product. OK, simply going to call it that. And once we do that, we're going to click on continue. And it says, what would you like to track? So you have projects, teams, tasks and campaigns. OK, so let's say I'm going to go with let's go with projects. OK. So once this does it, it says this includes rebranding your website, customer research and paid ad campaigns. OK, so you can obviously change all of this if you want to, or you can change the whole track. So you can go with campaign to summer sale, loyalty rewards, brand relaunch, same with teams, tasks, etc. So I'm going to go with projects myself and we're going to click on continue. OK, so once you have done that, it's going to load things in over here. So we're pretty much straight into it where it's going to give you the name and everything. So in this section, we have dashboard subscriptions, trash. Then we have notifications, invite others, members, direct support, audit log. And then we have the new uh, section over here as well for your database. So let's say, first of all, we're going to go over to our dashboard. Now here it says, if you find base row useful, you can start using it on GitLab. You can use it on Reddit, Facebook, LinkedIn. Obviously these are different link ons that they give 
or the different platforms that they actually associate themselves with or they work on. Then moving on here, you have your workspaces as well, where you can create multiple workspaces if you want to integrate yourself into them and if you want to work with them. So that also depends on how you want to approach your base row. It depends on how you want to approach your whole workspace and how you choose on working with your team. Then moving on here, it also shows you your usage and feature. And moving on here, you can also see how much you have on your free trial and free plan. Now, moving on, you can also go over to your subscriptions tab. OK, and your subscriptions tab show you the hosted cloud versions. If you have subscribed to them, you can see yourself hosting as well, where you can find your very own server with your instance ID if you have any. And you can see the members and the usage that you have. Then moving on, we have the trash section as well, where you can find the different things you have trashed in this, which could be your tasks, your databases, your products, etc. Then we have the other spaces like this. OK, so this is our workspace. Now you can go into the notifications of this workspace so you can see if you're mentioned or if, uh, you know, someone worked along with you in this section, etc. Then you can also go into inviting others so you can invite members into your workspace. You can invite them by email. You can invite them by member, etc. Then we act go into the actual members. OK, so one member in John Leahy's workspace. That's what it gives us. And here we have name. We have email and we have the default role that you can get. Same you can see in the invites workspace. OK pretty standard and pretty simple stuff to get your idea around. Now, here is where the main work starts, you know, in your database section. So here you can create different tables for yourself if you want to. Now, this is a default table that it already gave us that we can start working on as we go. So here are the different rows and here are going to be the different columns. So we're going to click on plus over here. And once we click on plus, here you have different single line text, long text, link to table, number, rating, Boolean, date, last modified, created on, created by, duration, etc. So let's say for this, I'm going to go with first we have name. Now we're also going to go with the date. OK, the date could be either a due date. It could be when it started, etc. So you could go with either your European format, the US format or the ISO format. I'm going to keep it European. And now it's also going to tell me if it, I want to include time or show my time zone. I'm going to skip that for now because I don't really want to add that. And I'm also going to give us a title called due date and I'm going to click on create. Now you can actually go ahead and add dates over here. So let's say the due date for this is 30th the due date for this is 27th and the due date for this is 28th. OK, you can go with all these things. And once you have gone through with all these details, you can easily go ahead and manage more columns into this. So let's say I'm going to add a column over here that will be called. Let's say you could go with any of these, to be honest, whichever work better for you. And you can also assign it to a member. So I'm going to go with the created by. OK, let's go with created by over here and just like this, you can assign a member to this if you want to. So if you want to assign people to it, you can go with the, their names as well as single select, multiple select. You can add their phone numbers, add different formulas. You can add different lookups and you can also add people as collaborators. OK, so if you want anyone to be collaborating in this, you can add their name. And just like that, that shows them that they're supposed to be working with you on this section. Then moving on. Obviously, once you've created or you know how to create columns, you can also create multiple rows and you can give multiple rows different types of names as you go along and you can add up to 50 rows if you want to. OK, just like this. And if you want, you can also delete rows for yourself if you want to. OK, it's pretty simple and pretty great stuff. You can also change the colorings. Obviously, that's a pro feature. But you can do that in the pro plan if you want to. You can sort different tables. You can create different filters for yourself and you can change your views as well. So right now we're in the grid view. 
but you can also go with the gallery view if you want to. So this is how your gallery view appears where each and every task is opened in a much cleaner lookout. And if you click on a task, you can add details into it pretty easily and pretty simply. So the different views that base row gives us is also a very big winner when it comes to, you know, it's basic usage. Okay. Then moving on, you can go ahead and import different files into this as well. You can import different views. So you have Kanban, you have calendar, etc. You can also go with the form view. Okay. So a form view is also generally used a lot where you can actually create a whole form out of the views you have. So let's say I'm going to go over to add a cover image. So the cover image, I'm going to add this one for myself and it says add a logo. Let's say I'm going to add any random logo over here. I'm going to add this as my logo. Once you've done that, you can add in a title for yourself. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and add a title. Uh, let's go ahead with something like uh, sign up. Okay. That is what we're going to be calling it. Then you can add a description uh, where you can tell people about this form. Now, you can actually start adding fields into this form. Okay. So first of all, we're going to be adding the name. Okay. So we have name, we can uh, go ahead and add any other field. So let's say I'm going to go with age, and then you can give it, let's say the number. And once you go with the number rating, you're going to click on create. And once you click on create, now moreover, as you add your rows, you can go ahead and give it some, you know, flair as well if you want to by changing its whole modes. Okay. And you can also go ahead and preview it for yourself. So if I go ahead and open up the preview, we are going to go ahead and wait for things to load up. And here we are. We have name and we have age, where if you click on submit, you can go straight into the workings of it. So once you've gone ahead with all of that, you know, you're pretty much set on cruise. Okay. You're pretty much set to go when it comes to the general working of all these things. Now, moving on, once you have decided these different views for yourselves and uh, you've gotten the basic, you know, general necessities out of all of these, you can also go ahead and, you know, insinuate different things into this. So let's say if I want to create a new table, you can actually create a table with data. Okay. So you can import a CSV file if you want to with a different context. Uh, so let's say I'm going to choose a CSV file. Let's say I have this 50 context CSV. Now, once you do this, you're going to go ahead to add table. And this basically creates a new random table for your context as we have over here. And it's going to basically add all the details. And as you can see, it added all the detail pretty simply and pretty straight away. Okay. It didn't do any issues or anything. It just added these things. And you can go ahead and work with the addition of these things by changing its color, groups, and views. Okay. So pretty simple and uh, pretty great stuff to have and add for yourself. Okay. Now, once you've added these things, you can also move on to create a new database. Okay. So you can either create a database or you can create an application or you can create it from template. So this we have over here is a database. Let's go ahead and create an application as well. So let's say I'm going to call this application new. And once we do that, we're going to click on add application. So once you click on add application here, it brings you to your general application builder. Okay. So you can choose the elements, you can choose the different data sources, and then you can choose its different stylings. Now it says, welcome to application builder. Base Rose application builder allows you to create dynamic and complex interface applications with no code. Pages can optionally source data from Base Rose installations table, or you can add data manually from the general tab. Okay. So all that data can be added from this section. Now, what happens is if you want to add different widgets, or you want to add different, uh, you could say individual sections into this, you can add it straight through this section. Okay. So if I come here, I'm going to click on the plus section, you can add headings, text, image, iframe, columns, table, button, link, form, text, input, choice, checkbox, login form, and repeat. So first of all, I'm going to add a heading. Okay. I'm going to add a heading and I'm going to call this, let's say brand new launch 
Okay, that is what we're calling it. Now, once you've done that, you can come down here and let's say I'm gonna give it a text line over here. So in this text line, I'm gonna go ahead and add some random texts for myself. So I'm gonna go ahead with AI and I'm gonna write me a whole description about a fitness tracking website slash app, okay? So we're gonna go ahead with these details for ourselves and we're gonna go ahead and enter this prompt. Now, once you've entered this prompt, you're simply gonna wait for it to load things in. You're gonna wait for it to give us all the details. And once you have done that, you can go ahead with insert and look at that. You have all the details down here now. You can also change the stylings and you can change the sizes of all these things. So, you know, we have different headings. So I'm gonna go with H1, then we have style. You can go with color. So, you know, just uh, give it any color you want. Let's say I'm gonna go with this. You can also give it an image. You can keep the width and everything. You can also go with the alignment, okay? You can centralize it. You can keep it to the side. You can also change the borders of it if you want to, okay? It's pretty easy and pretty simple stuff to get for yourself. Then you have these textings down here. You can keep it as a markdown or you can keep it as a whole text. A markdown, in my opinion, will look much better, especially when you add the different stylings. So let's say... I'm going to keep the stylings at a little beige. Okay, yeah, that seems good. Now, moving on, we're going to come down here. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding our form. Okay, we're going to be adding our input form. And in this form, you can go ahead and add either text inputs or you can add choices. Okay, so with the choices, you can begin to add elements. Uh, you can give it default values, whatever you want. It's all dependent on you. So, you know, it depends on how you want your app to look. Or you can keep in a user login form. You can go with the iframe, columns, buttons, links, and a whole lot more. It all depends on how you are willing to approach this, okay? Now, moving on, you can add different form elements. You can add a table element or anything like that. So let's say I'm gonna add in a table. Now in this table, you can keep a data source. Okay, you can keep the data source, any source that you have up here. So obviously we have this new product table over here. You can create a data source out of that. And you can also keep this example application as your data source. Okay, it all depends on how you're willing to, you know, properly approach your application. And once you're done with all of this, what you can simply do from here is you can add more textings and widgets into it. Like let's say you want to add a display image. So here's our display image. You can upload it or you can add its URL. I'm gonna go ahead to uploading it. So let's say I'm gonna go ahead and upload this image for now. And once it's fully uploaded, you can go ahead and add this into your page like that. And once you are done with all of these things and you like how your application looks, just click on publish. Now it says you need to have at least one domain in order to publish, okay? So to get a domain, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna make sure that you have one in your settings over here. So once you're in your settings, you're gonna make sure that all your domains are correctly added and you can add it in the form of a data source as well if you want to. And uh, getting it in the form of a data source is pretty easy. It depends on how you're willing to approach it, etc. okay? Moving on, you can also find all these sources for yourself in the main section. And if you just want to get a look at how your application is going to look, you can preview it from this section as well. And this is how it's going to, you know, basically seem to you. Okay. So yeah, basically this is how base row works and you know, it's a great alternative to your air table okay so if you want to create applications and you want to manage different databases and manage different projects in one space with all of your work members then this application called base row io is for you so if you want to start using it right now do make sure to use it for yourself it's totally free and it's really fun to start off with so thank you for watching this video all the way till the end and i'll be seeing all of you in the very next video have a great day goodbye